In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit, one God, amen. Just a few minutes we take uh, time to contemplate about what the, tre- what the church is celebrating today as we're starting the new beautiful month of Kiyak and also celebrating as the church calendar the entrance of the Theotokos into the temple. And it's such a beautiful celebration. And I think a lot of times we don't take the time to actually contemplate about that, about the, the, the actual fact, the actual event. And what does that mean for all of us? And what does, how can we actually be part of that celebration? As we always say, the church celebration, celebrations are not just events on a calendar that we can remember, oh, that happened, but why and how and what can, how can we be part of that also? Uh, as you know, first of all, the, 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 the story and the event of the entrance of St. Mary to the, th- to the temple is not in the Bible itself. The Bible doesn't give us that actual details. Uh, but it's from the tradition, from the church teaching. What we learn and what we hear as we read in the Synexarium that she was, when, we, when she was three years old, her mother and her father, Anna and Joachim, as they were waiting for a long time, for that time, for the birth of Mary, but then they still didn't say, no, she's ours. They were very, very ready to say, what, you know what, it's yours. It's a gift from you, and we are willingly, joyfully, want to come and offer her back to you. And we know from the tradition that the Lord actually later on actually able to give them another daughter, and she, they also called her what? Mary also. So with that, I think just three quick points that we need to, to, to contemplate about as part of that celebration. And it's a beautiful, as we said, that it comes also as we are still in the kind of beginning still of the fast of the nativity. So don't forget that we are in the fast. But as St. Mary was presented to the temple and went into the temple and stayed all those years, nine or ten years, in order when the fullness of time comes, she is what? She is ready to receive the Lord. She is ready to bear him. She is ready to carry him. So as we can look at this as if we are in this time of nativity fast, not just that we are changing the food, but we're actually how, how and what are we doing in order to be ready to really receive Christ in our heart. Three things real quick. Number one, that they presented. Number two, that she was in his presence, and number three, that she persevered. They presented, as it says, that they did not say no. You know, a lot of times, how many times we, we make promises, that God, you know, if you get me through this, I'm all yours, right? If you did this, I will do whatever you want me to do. And once things go back to normal, you know, I, I wasn't really serious about that. You know, just I'm going to give you, just this is enough. You, you, you understand. But you see the promise that they did. If you gave us a child, she will be yours. And they did not spare that by any mean. They did not even think about it. Actually, the tradition says that, that they were so happy that they actually gathered the children of the neighborhood and of the area and had like a procession. And they were all holding cans, candles. And they processed towards the temple. And Mary, adorned with the beautiful clothes going as a celebration, we are offering our daughter. Present. Present. What is it that God wants you to present? See and ask and pray. And what's on your heart to present? Especially during this time as we are celebrating and as we are in the preparation and preparing for his coming into our heart. Don't save anything for the Lord. Don't think that what we give is actually a loss. It's not a loss. Whatever we give for the Lord, we are gaining, we're not losing. We're always calculating according to the world. If I give five minutes, that will leave me how many hours left in the day, my day is going this and that, especially if I'm studying, especially if I'm doing this and this. I don't think it's worth it. Let me just know. Just our father on the go, kid, that's good in the morning. That's fine. I have a very busy day in the morning. It doesn't work this way. Offer fully. Present. Present. Number two, be in his presence. What? made the, the, the Theotokos ready is being in the presence of the temple. Just imagine what she was doing. Three years old. She didn't understand any scriptures. She didn't understand anything. Again, three years old by herself in the temple for nine or ten years. What, would, what, should, we under, what should she understand? Nothing. But the presence 
of God is what prepared her. Hearing the Torah, seeing the sacrificial work. This is the holy of the holies. That's why today in the, in the Hebrew, it gives attention, brings our attention that the holy of the holies is here. Not what they used to do over there. It's in our midst right now. We have that presence every time we come to the church. Maybe you're not able to come to the church weekly, but the church that's in your heart, that's his presence. Paul today, St. Paul in the Hebrew says, then indeed even the first covenant had ordinances of divine service and the earthly sanctuary. And he calls, keeps talking about the, the, the description of the sanctuary in the past. But then it says, but into the second part, the high priest went alone. And then he goes on to verse 11. But Christ came as high priest of the good things to come with the greater and more perfect tabernacle. We can just say, wow, Theotokos was in the temple, in the holies. We have what's more than that. We have what St. Paul talks about, that this is greater with the greater and more perfect tabernacle. Each time we are in the church, this, this is the true tabernacle. This is the presence of God. Each time I go into my room, each time I open my scripture, this is the time that I am purified by the presence of God. Don't disconnect from the presence of God. Throughout your day, make an effort to stay connected, to stay be in the presence of God. Present be in his presence, and number three, the last one, is persevere. The tradition actually says that Mary, as a three-year-old, she had to climb 15 steps to get to the top of the temple by herself, three years old, leaving behind father and mother and going and being received by Zacharias, the high priest. 15 steps, ascending, putting effort, focusing with submission, Perseverance, take this time of the, of the fast as it's the ascending ladder. Don't just every day goes by without paying attention, without evaluating, without taking the time. He is willing to purify, he is willing that his presence will change, but we need to put the effort. Especially nowadays, things are laxed. You know, we don't come to church every week. Maybe, you know what, it's not my turn, I'm gonna sleep in. What makes us not able to wake up still on a Sunday, even if it's not my turn, and to be ready, and to pray, and to read the scriptures, and read the readings, and attend, and do your quiet time. It's not, a, it's not a day off. It's not like, okay, it's not my turn, I'm gonna sleep in today. No, it doesn't work this way. Put an effort. Be intentional about it. This is what the church, and this is why the church is giving us those days to celebrate, to look at, as, as, as the psalm says today, that the continuation of the psalm, actually, that the virgins will go after her steps and learn from her and follow her. This is us. We are that bride, that we need to follow the steps of St. Mary. Her parents presented with no regret. She was staying in his presence, enjoying all the glory of him, to purify, to change, to transform, and she was able and willing to persevere, to go on. From the moment she climbed those 15 steps till the time again by herself for nine or 10 years, imagine that. There is, at the end, you know, you see God's grace after this, that you are full of grace. Now you are ready, really, that the Lord God in the flesh will come and dwell in you. And that dwelling is for all of us. And that dwelling is what we do today in the Eucharist, when he comes and dwells in us. This is the same thing. God in the flesh comes and we unite with him, we become one with him through the Eucharist, through the body of Christ. May the Lord give us that understanding of how we really proceed and how we really be ready and how we really use this time of the fasting in order to be ready, to enter, to present ourselves into the temple, the Holy of Holies, which we have, thankfully, right this moment, as close as it could be to each one of us, to him the glory, now and forever, to the ages of all ages. Amen.